Hi, I'm Zoe Delahunty Light, and I'm going to talk to you about Talana. Talana is one of the key characters in Horizon Zero Dawn, and as she's featured in the sequel, Horizon Forbidden West, you need to know who she is and why she's important to Aloy. She even has her own comic book series, which I'll be explaining too. All that's left to say is that if you haven't seen the previous three, yes, three, your girl's been working hard, episodes of this Horizon Zero Dawn lore series, they'll be linked in the pinned comment below. Now, let's hear all about our girl, Talana Kane Padish. To understand Talana, first you have to understand the Hunter's Lodge. The Hunter's Lodge is a Kaja institution that prides itself on being a club for the best Kaja hunters. Maintaining and running hunting grounds all around the region, the hunting grounds are where hunters can test their prowess, with challenges that range from sneakily killing machines to pitting sawtooths and thunderjaws against each other. You're graded on how well you do and get corresponding rewards, half sun for third rank, Full Sun for the second rank, and Blazing Sun for the highest rank you can attain. These challenges all come down to time. The faster you do the challenges, the better you rank. The Banuk also run their own hunting ground, but it's unrelated to the Kaja one. Divorced from the harsh reality of machine hunting for necessity, the Hunter's Lodge is mainly the purview of the Kaja nobles who seek the glory of the hunt. It's very exclusive, with only 14 members allowed to be enrolled at any time. There's a reason the hunters there are dressed in bright, flashy armour. They want to be seen killing machines, and they want to look beautiful while doing it, and while they boast about doing it. For the Hunter's Lodge, hunting is a spectacle. To join the Hunter's Lodge, first you have to do well in the hunting ground challenges. Achieve half sun rank on at least three of them and you'll become a fledgling, and are now allowed to enter the Hunter's Lodge. To be a fledgling means you're a decent hunter, but you're not yet a member of the Hunter's Lodge. First you need a hawk to sponsor you. A hawk is someone who's already been initiated and gone through all of the proving necessary to become one of the 14 members of the Hunter's Lodge. There's a catch to make it even more exclusive too. Out of those 14 members, only 7 of them can be hawks. Once you've found yourself a hawk sponsor, you become an official member of the Hunter's Lodge and are given the title of Thrush which is basically an apprentice. Thrushes account for the other seven permitted members of the lodge, so basically it's made up of seven hawks and seven thrushes. I know, isn't talking about rules and regulations thrilling? Anyway, accompanying your hawk in their missions and being tested along the way, eventually you yourself become a hawk, but only when your hawk dies. You take their place, essentially. Right at the top, the very best of the best, is the Sunhawk, who is the head of the Hunter's Lodge. Leadership isn't decided based on voting or anything democratic like that, oh no. Instead, the Hawk who brings back a trophy from the deadliest beast becomes the Sunhawk, supplanting whoever was in charge before. Trophies are important as they're the evidence that you've taken part in a successful hunt. Essentially, they're receipts. Big, clunky, slightly morbid metal receipts. All this mirrors the origins of the Hunter's Lodge. Look into the past and you'll discover that the Hunter's Lodge has its roots in Kaja royal history. The Tenth Sun King and all-around fanatic for hunting, the Radiant Nahasis, thought up this competition for the Kaja nobles, probably to keep himself entertained, to be honest. In a grand competition, kind of similar to the fanfare and prestige of a jousting tournament, I guessed, Nahasis announced that the nobles who killed the most deadly machines would become the first ever hawks, and the very best would become the Sunhawk. So, all that also meant that until recently, only male, pure blood Kaja nobles could be a member of the Lodge. Roll eyes here. The Lodge also employs some non members who help out with the less hunty stuff, like keepers who manage the hunting grounds, merchants who buy and sell hunting equipment at each hunting ground and send their proceeds back to the Lodge, Kaja artisans who tend to bar at the Lodge and entertain those there, and finally, the historian in residence who records the specifics of each hunt undertaken by the Hunter's Lodge. Hawks can also do essentially bounty missions if asked to by citizens of the Sundom as long as the Sunhawk is okay with it. Any profit the Lodge makes is divided among the Hawks and the Sunhawk, which, yay, makes the rich nobles even richer. Like plenty of other Kaja culture, when the mad Sun King Joran was in power, 
the Hunter's Lodge experienced its darkest chapter yet. This is all important to Talana's story, so listen up. Sacrifices were going on in Meridian Sunring. I go into more detail about why this happened in the first video in this series. And the sacrifices took the form of machines killing the unfortunate souls thrown into the Sunring, like a Colosseum in Roman times. Hawks spoke up against this, condemning it as barbarous cruelty, and yeah, they're right about that. To punish them, Duran threw them into the Sunring too to be killed by the machines. But being incredibly skilled hunters, the Hawks dispatched the waves of machines with discipline and protected those that they could, taking turns at manning the front lines while exhausted Hawks rested and then switching. Even the crowd watching the massacre turned on Duran and started to cheer for the Hawks, which made the Sun King furious. To get revenge for the situation he created, a behemoth was released into the ring and it destroyed everyone in its path, including the spectators of this bloodbath. The hawks in the sun ring had their friends hidden among the spectators, however, and among them were the hawks Talavad and Bratavin, Talana's father and older brother. Jumping to their feet and unsheathing their heretofore hidden weapons, Talavad, Bratavin and other hawks threw themselves into the sun ring to help their compatriots take down the behemoth, which Talavad succeeded in doing, eventually dealing the finishing blow. Because Duran is a piece of shit, he then decided to let a second behemoth loose in the sun ring. It killed the already wounded and exhausted Talavad. The remaining hawks were massacred by the behemoth as they protected the Karja still in the stands. Right, got all that? Swell. Now let's move on to Talana. Talana was born into a respected Karja noble house whose ancestors had been hawks for generations. Both her brother and father were hawks, as you're all too aware by now. Knowing that he was going to speak up and challenge Duran about the Sunring sacrifices, Talavad devised a plan. Talavad sent Talana away from Meridian, as he thought Duran might try and make his family line go extinct by killing his only remaining child. Things under Duran's rule were already getting dire as a civil war was brewing. Talavad lied to his daughter and told Talana that she needed to go and wait for him outside of Meridian so they could flee the city together. Hours passed. Talana was still alone. That is, until a messenger arrived with a message from her father who was, by then, fighting to his death in the sun ring alongside her brother. He told Talana to leave immediately. She did. Talana eventually returned to Meridian after Avard came into power. Avard orchestrated huge changes for the Hunter's Lodge, opening up membership to people, not just Karja, of any rank and gender. This good news was accompanied by some devastating revelations, however, as Talana finally found out what happened to her father and brother. Wanting to honour them and follow in her family's footsteps, Talana became a member of the Lodge thanks to one of her father's closest friends, Hawk Tarkus, who became Talana's sponsor. Our girl quickly rose from fledging to thrush. Leading the Hunter's Lodge and occupying the role of Sunhawk when Talana entered the Lodge was Arsis. He's a dick and a misogynist. Not only will he not allow any mention of the Sunring Massacre, and doesn't acknowledge the sacrifices those hawks and thrushes made, but he won't even let a memorial be set up to honour them. As Talana lost her father and brother in the massacre, as you can imagine, she's rather pissed at this. Assis also very obviously disapproves of the changes Sun King Avard made. Dick. Assis becomes Sunhawk courtesy of the fact that he was the first hawk in history to kill a Thunderjaw. However, there is one single machine that's deadlier than a Thunderjaw, and would therefore bestow whoever killed it with the honour of being the Sunhawk, Redmoor. Redmoor is a Thunderjaw that's killed countless hawks who have tried to vanquish it, making it the deadliest machine far beyond the entire Sundom. Knowing that his position is at risk as long as Redmoor remains alive, Assis sets his sights on killing the machine, and preventing others from doing so. Assis's misogynist mindset was getting on more people's nerves than just Talana. 
Tarkas, her hawk and sponsor, decided it was about time someone else led the Hunter's Lodge. So he and Talana devised a plan to take down Redmoor, thus making Tarkas Sunhawk. Redmore patrolled the lands, so it was never in the same place for long. Receiving news of Redmore's location, Tarkas knew he had to strike quickly before Assis got to the beast. On his way to Redmore, Tarkas asked Assis to tell Talana where he had gone, presumably keeping the fact that he was after Redmore a secret, so she could come and help him take down his quarry. Assis, figuring out that Redmore was Tarkas's target, did not pass this on to Talana. Tarkas died, taking on Redmore alone. Talana was led to believe that Tarkas tracked Redmore solo as he was too full of pride to share the kill with his thrush. Mind you, she still wanted to see Assis gone, so decided to take down Redmore herself and to become Sunhawk in Tarkas's place. After Aloy becomes a fledgling and Assis reluctantly admits that a hawk is available to be her sponsor, in the form of our girl Talana, and Aloy proves herself by bringing a ridiculous amount of trophies and helping Talana save a village from a suspiciously frequent glint hawk attacks, Talana finally has her own thrush. As Talana wants to be a Sunhawk one day, she has pretty high standards for her own thrush and doesn't let Aloy rest on her laurels. Instead, to prove her worth as a thrush, she tells Aloy to go collect trophies from a Stormbird and a Thunderjaw, which Aloy does, of course. Upon her return to the lodge, both Talana and Assis are missing. News came in while Aloy was away of sightings of Redmore, the deadliest Thunderjaw in the land, and the lodge's White Whale. Ambitious Talana knows that if she kills Redmore before Assis, she would supplant him as Sunhawk for killing the deadliest machine to exist. Realising she couldn't wait for Aloy or Assis might kill Redmore before her, Talana raced off in pursuit of both the Sunhawk and Redmore. Assis, surprise surprise, doesn't play fair. Knowing that Talana has her eye on the Sunhawk position, he sends Outlander mercenaries after Talana to kill her before she can get to Redmore. Aloy saves her skin and the pair go on to track the beast together. Am I referring to Assis or Redmore here? Both. Having spent time talking to Legan, the retired hawk, Aloy had found out about Assis's deception and his involvement in Tarkas's death. Aloy tells Talana the news, which only cements Talana's hatred of Assis and determination to see him rot. At first, Assis appears to be holding his own against Redmore, but he gets splattered pretty quick. So Talana and her thrush kill Redmore together. Assis dies, hooray, and with her Redmore trophy in hand, Talana finally becomes the first woman ever to be the Sunhawk. The first thing she does is set up a memorial for her father, brother, and the other hawks who died in the Sunring Massacre. She then helps Aloy defeat Hades and its machines. Icon. Right, footage from here is non-existent as all of this next saga takes place in the Horizon Zero Dawn comics, so bear with me. After Aloy's departure from Meridian, Talana takes on a new thrush, Milu. As Sunhawk, Talana has the final say in which bounties hawks are permitted to do, and this is where the whole mess begins. Kyran, an arrogant and entitled hawk, wants a contract to deal with a claw strider threat at a village called Rising Light, but Talana repeatedly denies him as his hunters are incompetent, inexperienced, and just like him, arrogant Karja nobles who could just make the situation worse. As a Sunhawk and impressive hunter, Talana becomes part of Sun King Avard's council on the restoration of Meridian as a special advisor, but within just two days, gets bored of the bureaucratic life. Things spice up when she and Erend help to repel a machine attack that happens during a council meeting, and feeling the thrill of the hunt again, Talana takes on the Rising Light contract for herself, leaving the Hunter's Lodge under Legan's watchful eye. Unexpectedly reuniting with her thrush, on her travels Talana meets Aloy fighting a Black Sawtooth, part of a new, deadlier breed of machines. Eventually they go their separate ways and things take a turn for the worse. During Talana's pursuit of a Claw Strider as part of the Rising Light contract, she gets gravely injured and falls unconscious. Amadis, a mysterious Karja fugitive, comes to Talana's aid, patches her up, and leaves her supplies, disappearing before she wakes. Once Talana reaches Rising Light, she sees Chiron and his hunters trying to take down a Claw Strider, meaning they've undertaken the contract despite her forbidding it. Their fighting draw more Claw Striders, including a black one, which Talana narrowly escapes with Amadis's help. After an argument where Amadis accuses Talana of being one of Chiron's mercenaries, 
the pair agree to work together to eliminate the claw strider threat. Upon Talana pausing to redress her wounds, the pair spot a corpse of a mercenary and drag marks that indicate Chiron was successful in killing a claw strider, taking it to the nearby trappers who issued the bounty. However, in their wake is the footprints of the black claw strider. Reaching the trappers, Talana and Amadis witness the group arguing with Chiron over the bounty. Although Amadis wants to continue pursuing the black claw strider, Talana points out that they have a duty to warn the trappers and mercenaries that they're in danger. But it's too late. The Black Claw Strider appears, and during the fight, Talana rescues Chiron from near death. Working together with Amadis, the Black Claw Strider is at last vanquished when Talana kicked it off the edge of a nearby cliff. They turn to see Chiron and his mercs aiming their bows at them, with Chiron boasting that he's going to collect a bounty worth more than the trapper contract. He reveals Amadis to be the traitor of the Southern Spear, a soldier involved in the Red Raids and who is wanted by the powerful Cove Reeve Karja noble family for killing its patriarch in the raids. I assume he means here that Amadis is on the side that didn't want the Red Raids to happen and killed the Kova Reeve Patriarch to stop him from enslaving people, but I could be wrong, although that's what I'm going to go with. Talana and Amadis do the sensible thing and jump off the cliff into the river below. Once they're safe and sodden in a nearby riverside cave, Amadis tells Talana about his past, expressing guilt and remorse, especially over the death of his companion Nessa. Talana comforts him, saying he should honour Nessa's memory by moving on, but their heart-to-heart -heart is interrupted by the Black Claw Strider who survived the fall. Talana kills the Black Claw Strider, for good this time, I promise, and then explores the depths of the cave, wondering why the Claw Strider came there of all places. Inside, they find a cauldron. Realising the cauldron is producing the black machines, Talana tries to cause a cave-in to steal it shut, but the arrival of Chiron, his mercs, and a shell snapper puts a stop to that. Long story short, the shell snapper kills Chiron and his men, and then Talana kills the shell snapper. Amadis and Talana part ways, as Amadis needs to voyage to the Forbidden West to return to the battlefield he fled so long ago and finally lay Nessa to rest. Talana expected some kind of romance between her and Amatis, so is a bit wrong-footed, but understands. Instead, she asks Amadis to write to her in Meridian, as she's having her own epiphany. Realising hunting for glory was a luxury the Lodge can no longer afford, she decided it was about time the Hunter's Lodge became something else. Namely, a force that protects civilians from the machine threat, doing it for the safety of those who cannot protect themselves, rather than in the name of bounties. And that's Talana's story in Horizon Zero Dawn. What do you think will happen next for our girl? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, thanks very much, and don't forget to like and subscribe to Eurogamer as we have a new video out every single day. Now I'm going to go and wistfully look at Talana's armour, because god I wish I had it in real life, so I'll see you next time.